Hi, welcome back to Finca del Cielo. It's uh, towards the end of December now, but you can see we still have gorgeous sunshine. But I thought today I would just talk a little bit about our journey so far with growing our own veg. When we first moved here, we were really keen to grow as much of our own veg as possible. We never use the term will be self-sufficient because I think that's unrealistic really, especially for novices like us. But I'd read up uh, about permaculture and I liked the idea of growing our own food forest. So permaculture basics are, you have the top canopy which are your trees, followed by um, bushes underneath the trees with various different fruits and then you have your ground level, your vegetables. And it became apparent quite quickly when we moved here that this finca in this area wasn't really going to be uh, very good for that sort of idea. So we've adjusted our plans as we've gone forward. Now last year we did grow some veg, we had some really good beetroots, we had some cabbage, um, various different things that we managed to grow and we tried a variety of different methods. We tried planting seeds in the ground, seedlings into the ground, we tried some raised beds and just kind of sat back and went well what works? We've since had some advice from one of our neighbours, Pepe, he's a lovely guy, he calls his finca his supermarket and he regularly brings us tonnes of vegetables, so loads of peppers and tomatoes. So we've had a good look at our neighbours to see, well, what do they grow, what works well here? And basically most people stick to trees, uh, citrus trees and olive trees. But here and there on Finkers, you do see some people um, that put aside a corner for some beans or for some peppers or for some tomatoes. So really we're looking at potatoes, onions, beans, peppers, squash and tomatoes are probably the things that grow the best here. We did have success last year with beetroot and with cabbage, so I'm just going to turn the camera around and I will show you our veg garden as it is at the moment. So we built this frame on Pepe's advice and at the moment we have cabbage, uh, beetroot and kohlrabi um, growing in here as well as a lot of weeds. I really need to do some weeding tomorrow. But the framework will really come into its own next year when we're growing um, peppers and tomatoes because they will just grow up and across all of these uh, canes. And now this actually cost us nothing to build. Uh, these canes were all free down by the river. They grow in massive clumps, so it was just a little bit of elbow grease to, to get it up, but it's really sturdy. We've had 90 kilometer an hour winds in the last few weeks and it's all been good. So we dug these trenches um, so that we can flood irrigate this end. We've had some problems with growing stuff down here. And we think that because everybody around here uses flood irrigation, over the years, it, the water digs channels and you end up, you'll be rotivating and all of a sudden your rotivator falls down a big hole. So when we realised that we were having a few problems down here, we thought, OK, we need to improve the soil quality, which having a, a compost loo, uh, obviously we make all our own compost. Um, we did put some fertiliser into the ground. We rotivated it several times um, and, and it has been a, a lot better now this year. So being able to flood irrigate this end um, makes watering veg an awful lot quicker and you don't have to do it quite so often. There's some real benefits to farming here. One is the sunshine. You can see it's what 30th of December today and it's wall to wall sunshine. We have something ridiculous like 320 days of sunshine a year and we average about seven and a half hours a day. So that is obviously a real pro when it comes to growing vegetables here. But funnily enough, it's also one of the biggest downsides. Um, you have to be careful when you plant because quite often you put seedlings into the ground and they are crisp and dead within a couple of hours. So the timing of these we're starting to learn now. Um, we plant nothing between May and September. Nothing can survive the sun. So we get effectively two springs a year. So we get the spring in March, April time and again September to November. So we planted all of these out in November. So these will be ready to harvest um, in the spring. And then at that point, then we'll plant all our summer crops, our peppers, tomatoes. I think we'll try some corn as well. 
But what we've decided to do now is sort of scale back some of the plans for now. Um, the idea of living this life is not to put ourselves under huge pressure and say we'll be self-sufficient within 18 months. We always thought it would take us probably five years to get this place as we wanted it. Um, so at the moment we are just growing veg down here. We do have a few beans popping up on the third terrace, we had a bit of space. But as for growing under the trees, it's a bit of a no-no. The orange trees take up so much water that anything you try and plant under these, it's, they simply die. So there is absolutely no point in putting all of that hard work and effort in um, to end up with nothing. So being able to go around and pick our own fruit off the trees is amazing. We're hoping that some of our chirimoyas um, this year will we'll, um, we'll hopefully get some fruit. I think they're about old enough now. We've got one here and then we've got another 11 chirimoya trees up on the third terrace. Now this was a fruit that we'd never seen in England. Um, if you do ever see them, buy them. They are amazing. They're also known as custard apples. Don't eat the pips, they're poisonous. Um, but the actual fruit itself is beautiful. And on this side we have a nispro. Uh, again, it wasn't a fruit that I was um, very conscious of when we moved here. You can see this is all in flower at the moment and being pollinated. Um, and we'll have the fruits for those um, next summer. Um, nispros are sort of a bit like a peach but they're quite bitter. Um, we have a friend that loves them. So we've said, well, when the fruit comes on this next year, in return for a favor, you're more than welcome to come and eat it all. So where have we learned about gardening? We, we have been watching YouTube. Um, there's two people in particular that I would mention. First of all, is a guy called Mark and his channel is called Self Sufficient Me. Now he's based down in Australia he tends to grow everything in raised beds and he has the most wonderful site with beautiful veg. And the other guy is a young guy from New Jersey in America called James Prigioni. Um, look him up, he's so enthusiastic and he has created a, a food forest. He started with a, a blank canvas effectively, so he's been able to design it from the ground up, whereas we're sort of trying to work with what we've already got here. Um, so his his site is well worth a look if this is the sort of thing that you're interested in go and check those two guys out self-sufficient me and james prigioni there's huge amounts of information on the internet but as always there's a percentage of it that is rubbish and you also have to be very careful and take into consideration um, what your climate is where you live how much time you've got to spend on this as well so we're happy with where we've got to so far we are starting to grow some food in the meantime, we buy our veg from Alexandra at the weekly market in the village. Um, and we have some great uh, deals going on with neighbours. They give us some veg, we give them some fruit. Um, Alexandra at the veg stall, I'll give her some uh, chutneys and some marmalades and some eggs. And in return, we get some veg for free. So I think, you know, the, the sort of life that we wanted, um, we're getting there, we're getting there. But time will tell hopefully this new way of gardening in the veg garden down here um, is going to prove successful for us um, so we will see the cabbages are starting to come on now the beetroots are coming through um, and I, I love kohlrabi so to have a, a never-ending supply of that will make me very very happy so I hope that's been helpful have a look on YouTube there's lots of people showing you all sorts of methods for gardening and my advice would be go with your gut instinct, uh, start small, give a few things a try and then grow from there. So hopefully this time next year we will be a bit more knowledgeable and we'll be able to grow a little bit more uh, vegetable, uh, veg every year um, until we can say yay we're growing half our own veg. So thanks for watching and have a very very happy new year and I will catch up with you soon. Bye!